Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Grisafi. And I'm Sarah Gaston. And we want to pump you up. Okay, that's not really what we're going to talk about. No. Okay. Um, we have an idea for a series of shows where we tell amazing and unbelievable stories and from the terrifying field. Terrifying tales from our own careers. So we decided we want to share with you all the crazy crap that's happened to us either in auditions or on sets or um, on stage or backstage. Anyway, wild but accurate things that have happened to us throughout our careers and those of our guests. And maybe it's something you can relate to. Maybe there's a lesson involved. Yeah. Oh, there's always going to be a lesson involved. And, and one of the things I want people to get out of it is sometimes these things are out of your control. Other people's behavior can affect you, what you do. Oh, absolutely. And you need to get used to that and learn how to deal with it. Yes. The fir- yes. 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 The first story I would like to share with you is just that. Or with them. With them yes. and you. Uh-huh. The first story I would like to share... Uh, was not my fault, but it most definitely affected me on set that day. Okay. This was early in my career, and I was excited to be submitting my headshot to extras casting calls. And I got a call from a casting director, an extras casting director, uh, telling me I was picked to be a waiter in the Sally Field movie, Woman of Independent Means. It was a TV movie filmed in Houston some 20 years ago. Oh, sweet Moses. One of the first things I ever did. It was probably really on film. Yes, it really was on film, yes. (laughs) So I get excited about this. This might be the third thing that I've done professionally. Mm -hmm. Even though it's an extra job, I'm excited about it because I'm new. And I'm eager, and I didn't know the things I know now. I didn't know the protocol of getting information to the talent. Mm -hmm. So... I get a call, and I get told I've been picked to be a waiter in this film, and I say, great, can I have the information? No, it's not available yet, was the response. Which, by the way, it's never available that early. Right, and that's why I say, knowing what I know now, it was a silly question to ask, but I didn't know better. So, Probably two weeks went by, and I still didn't hear anything, so I called the extras casting director and said... Who shall remain nameless. And I asked, do you have the information yet so I know what day to work? And the response was basically, Joe, no, I don't have the information. I promise you I will call you when the information is available. So I'm guessing another two weeks went by, and it was one morning, I'm still in bed, and my phone rings at 8.30 in the morning, and guess who it is? Hmm, could it be um, the casting director? It was the extras casting director <gasps> panicking, saying, Joe, I am so sorry, I forgot to call you. We need you on set right now. Your call time was 8 o'clock. Wow. And I'm like, oh, no. So I, I jump out of bed. I'm, I'm, I know it's not my fault, but I'm a nervous wreck, and I'm trying to rush there as quickly as I can. But the problem was when I got there, I was the person that held everything up mm-hmm. because I didn't show up on time, and it wasn't my fault. And she probably didn't broadcast that it was her dropping the ball. Right. The extras casting director, I am positive, did yeah. not. Oh, he overslept. Yeah, mm-hmm. did not. Uh, take uh what's the word i'm looking for she didn't take responsibility the yeah oh. she didn't she didn't take responsibility <laughs> right, for the mistake right. so i show up and the second ad i check in with is rude to me and then wardrobe is looking down their nose at me and all these mm-hmm. people which they already don't like you because you're an extra so. right <laughs> so my day started off terrible and again remember i'm new to all this and then i get dressed up and i'm sent to set and Sally Field is in the scene and I'm interacting with her as a waiter holding a tray full of glasses and I was a nervous wreck. Clink, 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 clink. yes, (laughs) clink, 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 clink. They redo it, redo. They finally said, okay, take the glasses away. (laughs) But you know what? You know who the nicest person was? Oh, Sally Field. Yes. She put her arms around me and said, it's okay. And I was clearly nervous, but she put me at ease. And I was like, that's really great when all these other people were just like being rude. Yeah. Um, So that's my story. So gracious. So So gracious. 
Well, Someone Sally. else's mistake can ruin your day, so you got to learn how to brush that off. Well, here's the thing. It has the potential to ruin your day if you let it. But that happens. Y'all, shit happens, and you just got to roll with it. Yes. Yeah, for sure. That's right. Shit's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Expect it to happen so you know what to deal with it oh, when yeah. it happens. Yeah. So, yeah, just know that going in and go, oh, oh here's the shit show. Okay, great. Okay. And then, <laughs> bleep, bleep, bleep. Yeah. And then you're, are we bleeping this out? No. Oh, okay. I don't think we have to. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you just expect the uh, shiitake mushroom show, then you're going to be good to go. Yes. That's a good embarrassing story. So that's my story. Okay. What's your story? Oh, gosh. I thought I had an embarrassing story that I was going to share, too. Um, yeah, I'll just share another not my fault, but wire casting directors sometimes the devil story. Um, I'm kidding. They're not really the devil. For example, Dolores Jackson is not a devil. Um, oops, I said her name, but that's because I love her. Anyway, um, so I will try to make this as brief as possible. So this was, again, probably 20 years ago. Yeah, I got called to Dallas for a national commercial. It was a really big deal. So if you know anything about national commercials, lots of money involved and um, I drove up the night before and I stayed with my family so that I could be fresh and you know alert and ready to go and and cute you know and I got got there and this was before uh, people really like had GPS and that sort of thing widely available and if we had them at all anyway my uh, my agent had not sent me a script and my agent had not sent me a map. And I'm no longer with that agency, by the way. And so my sister-in-law said, um, oh, that's it's kind of hard to get to that. It's in downtown Dallas, let me draw you a map. Long story short, I got lost. And so I called the number I was supposed to call and I circled and I circled and I circled this area in downtown Dallas like over and over again and uh, a poor casting assistant kept calling them back going, I'm, I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. So I finally, oh, by the way, at this time, I also had a late model Mercedes and the air conditioning decided to go out. Oh, no. And it was really hot. And so I am sweating and, I, you know, I was just like kind of going out of my mind. And um, I get there and then they want to rush me into the audition room right away. And um, the casting director did not have a reputation for being a nice person, and, and I, now I know why. So uh, she puts me in there with this guy and says, okay, go. And I, they're trying to do, he's like trying to do lines, and I like don't know the line, so I'm just improvising. And um, she goes, cut, and she said, Everyone who's watching, you know, he, she calls like a big group of waiting actors in there. Oh, no. Yes. And she said, everyone, Sarah will not be getting this part. And I want you to know why. Because she does not know how to play to the camera. Okay, so we were... Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I know. Oh, <laughs> I know. And uh, because we were supposed to be loading stuff in the back of, like, the SUV, like we were at, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot or something. Anyway, and, you know, of course you can imagine, I just kind of melted into the ground. Uh, but after that, I was so furious. And so I, I've never gotten back to Houston so quickly, I will tell you that. And I called my coach at the time. And I said, I had this experience and I don't think it was my fault. And I don't know why this happened. And he was like, it's absolutely not your fault. She's a burr, 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 burr. You know, she can blow it out of her ear. He, he was really awesome. And, um, and yeah, so just, so, okay. So something to take away from that. Um, first of all, again, anything can happen. Anything can happen. I know, well, I, I went up the day before, so that really couldn't be helped, but, um, Ever since then, I map out very carefully exactly where I'm going. Um, I keep a key map in my car and a map of every city I audition in, even if I have my GPS because, you know, GPS can fail, right? I also know that it's totally within my right because I've gone to all that trouble to, you know, show up for that audition in another city that I can say, 
hey, can I have just a minute? You know, I've been driving around in a hot car for an hour. Can you just give me 10 minutes to kind of collect myself and freshen up? And, you know, have you added a script? You know, is there anything I need to know? I mean, literally, they just shoved me into the audition room without knowing a thing. So I didn't come away from that thinking, oh, you know, like, I'm such a dummy. I was, I was infuriated. I was like, how dare you humiliate me when you did not tell me what I needed to be doing. <laughs> anyway, but uh, prepare for the unexpected. And whatever you do, don't let that kind of behavior, whether it's the casting director dropping the ball or the casting director being mean to you, um, don't let that uh, ding your confidence and hurt you or make you feel less than because that's just them being dum-dums. Yes. The end. Yes. And in my case, I, I also chose not to say, but, but, but I didn't know and pass the blame right. to the casting director. Correct. I believe I said, did say, I just found out this morning that I was working today. Right. But I didn't try to come up with any other excuses to make myself look better. Right. Because it was what it was, and I hate that saying. Right, right. But you just... And you, didn't, you didn't call anybody else out. No. Yeah. And you just, you just got to deal with it and be as professional yeah. as you can. And if you're late, you're late. Yeah. And at least I'm sure she called and said, hey, he's on his way. Right, right. Um, yeah. But yeah, you got to turn it around the best way you know how, whatever that takes. Right. And get back on your feet yeah. and just let it roll away, roll right. off. Well, and the thing about it is um, castings can be really, really stressful. We've both worked in casting, so we've like seen it from the other side of the desk. And movie sets can be really stressful because there are a million things that can and will go wrong. And so their bad day that sort of gets sprayed on you is uh, you don't have to personalize it, you know? I right. mean take responsibility when you have done something wrong and like like you say like don't don't make an excuse just yeah I'm late or whatever if that had been the case um but yeah they're gonna have bad days and sometimes they're gonna take it out on you and that's literally their problem and I know the person of whom you speak I worked with her for many many years yeah and god rest her soul she's not with us anymore she was a lovely person outside of casting yeah. But it was one of those situations. She was one of those people that didn't handle stress really well. Mm. And it is a stressful job because you're relying on 100 actors to show up. So you do your job. Right. If people don't show up, if they're late, it throws off your entire day. And it is, it's, it's very stressful and frustrating. Right. And the client can be on the other end throwing last minute changes yes. or saying, we hate everybody that you showed us from this morning. Now we need this type of person. I mean, we had that happen on that uh, one job where uh, I think you and Dolores were working on it, maybe I was helping too, where they changed the specs three times over a week of casting. That's happened a couple of times. Right, yeah. because they like they, th they have an idea and then you bring a bunch of people in and they go, oh no, we don't like those people, so you bring in a new type. And oh, we don't like those people, so you bring in a <laughs> third you, job. Did you ever help me or Dolores when the specs changed during the audition? And they say, oh, by the way, can you? we're not doing that role anymore? Can you oh, cast yeah. for this role? Yeah. And it's totally new specs, and no one that you've brought in that day fits the description. Then you're hustling to, right. in your spare time, yeah. to call the agents and say, get me more people today. Get me more people today. Today, yeah. like yeah. right now. Right. With there's two hours left in the day, maybe. Right. Um, and then you still got to see all those people who no longer have a chance at it because that role's gone. Right. Or you show up in a green dress because nobody told you the commercial audition would be filmed on a green screen. <laughs> and they're wondering if you just have extra clothes in your car so that you can go change. Oh, that's funny. And you don't. <laughs> and you're invisible except for your head in your hands. That's a story for another day. If, that's, if that happened, for the that's day. another story it to tell. It happened. <laughs> All right. Is this it for That's this episode? That's it. So uh, okay. we're going to share some more stories in other videos. Yeah. And I hope you enjoy this and got a nice laugh. Yeah. And know that hopefully you can relate to something. And if, if you don't relate to this, you will eventually. Yes. Something will happen where you go, oh, okay. Yeah. It's not my fault. I shouldn't take this personally. Yeah. Just get through it. Yeah. And then you can say, it's not me. It's you. Yeah. 
Oh, wait, that wasn't the point. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that. What is the point? The point is... Oh, you already said the point. Yeah, yeah. so I won't repeat myself. These are just tales from the street so that you know that we've been where you are. And, and everyone's going to have these tales to tell if you do this for any length of time. Oh, You're yeah. going to have your own stories. And if you've got a really great one, why don't you message us? Yeah. And we might include you. Yeah. We'll get you, we'll get you up here and, uh, and talk to you about it. All right. Okay. I'm Joe Grisaffi. Sarah Gaston. And thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. All okay? that good stuff, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.